So let's talk a little bit about this strange experiment of recording the bosque. And uh, what's going to happen is that, that rather than have a, a, some kind of a documentary crew wandering around all the time, we're going to teach people to record themselves. And the advantage of that is it's much more personal. You can decide when you have something to say. It could be three in the morning and you have some idea. Uh, many people have never done photography in a way that the quality really mattered. And so this is going to be a little lesson for you on how to do it. You can use almost any kind of camera. Lightweight camera is just fine. Uh, probably better since your hand doesn't get as tired. Uh, it does have to be able to do video. And another kind of important aspect is that it be able to do a fairly wide angle. If you're going to be recording yourself, that's important because you need to be in the shot. The other reason wide angle is important is because you want to get in really close with your subject. Uh, we don't have good audio equipment. So if I want to be in a shot with Kevin here, then I need to get in really close with him. So we could talk like this. We're both in there. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Brian. Hi. You've been doing great on camera, by the way. Good smile. Thank you. Thank you. I think you're more of a natural than I am. Oh, yeah. I've had a lot of years of trying to figure out how to do this. Anyway, so... Uh, which you, Yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, so one thing to remember is to keep your uh, lens clean. Don't, uh, don't put your finger on it. It's a good idea to have a lens cleaning kit or some kind of uh, uh, wipes or something. Don't wipe the lens with your shirt or a tissue. Uh, a lot of that stuff has oils and it will destroy your very fragile lens. You need actual lens cleaning tissues and, and special stuff. Uh, so carry those with you. Uh, the other thing you want to do is make sure your battery is ready and that your uh, memory card is, is ready. You want to have extra batteries, keep them charged, and you might want to have extra memory cards and make sure you can dump those onto your computer regularly. I actually own for this camera three different batteries. That way I can have one charging while I'm uh, carrying the other two. And then every night I go ahead and charge those. We're very picky with electricity here. We don't want to use much, but uh, battery charging is something that, that we can do certainly during the day. And for really good photographers, we might be able to do it at night as well. Um, some other things are uh, probably the number one piece of advice in addition to getting in close, is learning to hold the camera really steady. Uh, some people, I mean, when we look around, uh, our heads move around a lot. And if I do that with the camera, you're going to have uh, a big problem. You know, you get an effect where it's like, oh, I'm looking over there, and then I see over there, and, and it does not look good for the viewer. They get uh, a little bit uh, maybe seasick. Um, so what have we got so far? Get in close, uh, hold the camera very steady, Right now, I just have it in my arm. You could hook it to a tripod, and you'll get good at that. So you can experiment with it. Don't uh, stress out. Another thing to consider is lighting. Right now, the sun is behind me, and so uh, I, I am exposed correctly. That's because I set a backlighting setting on my camera. It's a good idea to learn about that. Let me show you what it looks like without backlighting. Logically challenged. <laughs> yeah. So... Here uh, I've turned off the backlighting option and so you can see that I'm no longer exposed very well. Of course if I turn towards the sun, this is dappled sun coming through the, the trees, then I can sort of get it okay. With this dappled sun though, I think I'll just leave the uh, backlighting option on. I like it better. Uh, let me turn that back on. The other thing to think about is, is really start thinking like the viewer. So let's say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and uh, video somebody. I could just... Uh, do it like this. They're very small in the frame. Instead, let's say she's bending over and watering something. Um, I want to get in front of her instead of behind her. And I want to get down so I can see her face. That's, that's a lot more interesting shot. People want to see faces. They don't want to see the back of people's heads. Now, as we start to record the bosque, we want to make stuff that's fun and educational. Uh, the temptation would be to just record the entire day, everything that happens, and then let the editors figure it out. The problem is that that's an exhausting task for the editors. It's just too much footage. So what we've got to do is get in sync with knowing what's going to happen that's interesting and recording it. That means we can be in communication with the, uh, the subject. And so they can know that they have something to say. They could just indicate with a hand signal that the camera person should turn the camera on. And uh, you get a quick clip, and you slap all those clips together, and you've got something actually watchable. Uh, you know, already we've got a lot of footage of people with wheelbarrows hauling stuff around. That gets a little old after a while.
What I do with my personal camera is, is I uh, keep it in a, a little pouch right on my belt. That way I can get at it really easily. If it was in my day pack and I have to open up my day pack and all that, then it's, it's too much of a barrier. I'm not going to do it very often. Um, so that's a, a great way to go. I could just, you know, whip it out and record something I think is interesting. Uh, another option is if you put it on a tripod, you can carry it on a tripod. That stabilizes the camera automatically. I mean, I kind of want to get into steady cams and, and things. Um, but also then you can't really put it away. So if you're a dedicated camera person, then that's a good option. And we've actually made some uh, sticks with a, a mount for cameras on them. And so if you're carrying that around, you're always ready to film. That's a good way to go if, if your primary function is cameraman. For somebody who's doing stuff and just uh, getting clips uh, in vez en cuando every now and again, then uh, these little hip, uh, hip ones are really good. It's a good idea to learn how to edit video because then that helps you uh, capture better footage. Uh, so you start to see like what length the clips are good. Also you learn things like pause before you start. So if I, for example, start talking right when I turn the camera on, then it makes it really hard to, to edit that in a good way. It, it just feels too clippy. Uh, there'll be times when you're just talking and doing fun stuff, and uh, since you're not recording everything, you don't want all the junk, uh, you'll suddenly realize, you know, what we just said, what we were just talking about, is actually probably interesting enough to share with the camera. And so you'll say to yourself, let's rewind. You just, in fact, you just have to say, let's rewind. Let's just say, rewind. And you just take the conversation back four minutes, uh, turn the camera on, you have the same conversation, you sound a little more intelligent because you've already said it before, maybe you even think of an improvement on what you said, and then you're really sharing an improved version of, uh, of the experience here. As you're learning to do video, it's extremely helpful to record yourself or record a scene and then immediately play that back. And play it back with a really critical eye so you can see how's your framing, how's your, how's your motion, how's your lighting. And if you do that enough times, then your confidence that you're getting a, a good take, a good clip, will increase rapidly. Another thing we can do is make sure that we gather all the clips daily. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we get out of sync, it becomes hard to edit uh, together a video to share. So every evening, probably at dinner, we'll go ahead and have a computer. We'll capture all the video on it and, uh, and label it by the date and clear off all the cameras. That keeps our clips in sync, makes them a lot easier to edit. A lot of the stuff we do will be chronological. So we're really just uh, showing what it would be like to be in the Bosque for a day can actually be extra interesting because you can't be everywhere. So if we're able to kind of watch the dailies, I believe they do that in movie making, then you can see other people's vision of the day. And the more variety of activities we have, it's kind of fun. You get a, an a enlightened, a, a greater Bosque experience that way. So one kind of video we'll do is just documenting the day as it goes along. That's going to be a fun way to share the experience with people. In other cases, we want to make a more in-depth videos about a topic. Let's say we want to make one about yoga in the Bosque, or we want to make uh, uh, one about food forest farming and some of the details of, of how that's different than other styles of agriculture. Or maybe we want to make a video about how we relate culturally to the towns around us and how how, how what the Bosque's place in, in cultural development is, uh, these kind of topics. And so those will require a little bit more planning. We'll want to sit down and, and do a little extra research. We'll want to make lists of shots we would need. And, uh, and so that's going to be a different kind of task. So there's an interesting issue for folks, and I certainly understand it. Uh, a lot of people are very shy to be on camera. And uh, I tell you, you get over it. Uh, right now I'm talking to you like I would talk to you if you were just here. Uh, the camera for me is just a bunch of people in a little box. And uh, it's, it's hard at first, you know, your, your, your self-esteem and, and it's, it sounds weird to hear your own voice the first time. You're like, do I really sound like that? Um, and you want to look good, you know, because people want to look good. But, you know, let's just get real. Let's be real with each other and let's be real with the camera. Um, I don't think we need to wear makeup. I don't think we have to wear nice clothes. I don't think we have to, uh, to worry about it. 
Uh, the project here is about creating a new culture. The project here is, is uh, hopefully freeing people up to be themselves. And in fact, the camera can actually be a, an interesting tool to start to see yourself. It's sort of a technological mirror. And uh, it might even help in your self-development. So, accept it. Uh, it's fine to be nervous at first, I suppose, but the other thing is, is that if we're, if we're talking about actual things, doing actual things, then uh, it's, it's, you just kind of uh, don't worry about it. You know? And if you want to, you can come here and be yourself. Uh, uh, you can promote your own uh, identity that you're presenting uh, and look good and everything. Uh, or if you want to, you can also experiment with being a different person. You could come to the Bosque and pick a different name to be, and essentially you're an actor. And uh, so you can play with your own identity and role. Uh, also here you're with other people than you'd be normally be with, so you're interacting in new ways. If you have uh, troubles in your life, uh, you don't like some aspects of how you are, you can experiment with not being that way. You know, maybe you're impatient or maybe you're lazy. Well, let's experiment with then being the opposite of that. And uh, it could be a really good time. You could be like this little puppy and go nuts all the time. Happy puppy. <laughs> I tend to look down. You look down when you look in the camera a little Sometimes, bit? Sometimes, but just like yeah. when I get shy, I look down. Yeah, that's okay. Not, I mean, no, you, could, you, could, you could try side shots like this. Uh, Three-quarter shots work really well, and you could be talking to somebody else. I'm really curious about experimenting with multiple people in the shot. I want to get a mirror with a hole in it so that the camera's right here, and you're actually talking into the camera to each other. So you're seeing each other's face in the, in the mirror, but, but the camera's got you both, too. Um, and I want to figure out ways to do group discussions where we can actually record it. You know how they have like a talking stick in some communities, like one person's talking? Well, it could be that the camera follows the talking stick. And so everybody gets their chance to talk. You could do that with like 10 people. Um, and there's a lot of other experiments. We're essentially coming up with a new format of, of uh, you know, this social media releasing of uh, clips and, and we're filming in a real place, actual things. So we're gonna have a lot of playing to do. Oh, another thing is try and speak up. Some people don't speak up. They've learned how to speak up. Uh, if, you've been, if you've done any theater, then you, you learn to project. That's what they call that. And uh, we're not using the best equipment here, so it's a good idea to just be a little tiny bit extra loud, unless you're a loud person, in which case maybe you should tone it down. <laughs> now, the nice thing is that uh, you'll find your own rhythm with the camera. You'll find your own way of dealing with it. It could be that that you record yourself and uh, you're, you're narrating your Bosque experience, it could be you prefer to be behind the camera. We do need people behind the camera who seek out the activity and get very good at capturing it. So, uh, so even if you're not totally comfy in front of the camera so much, there's still a good role for you. So here I'm gonna record a, a shot, uh, but the first thing I do is I look in the background and I say to myself, I don't like that Tinaco, that uh, water thing. So we're going to change the angle. I don't change it this way because that would put the sun behind them. If we go over here, uh, it looks a little bit better to me. Better. And you always get the people nice and close in together. We're going to illustrate something. Go ahead and face each other directly and talk. Hi. Hey, how's it going today? Very well. Good to <laughs> Good see stuff. you. Very exciting. Uh, so what happened there was we only got to see the side of their face. But if they do what's called cheating, it's theater, it's called cheating, they cheat slightly towards the audience. So they actually turn their bodies a little bit to here, and then they, they talk to each other, but they're kind of looking crossways. So go ahead and try that again. How's it going today? Very well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Much better than yesterday. See, now we can see their lovely faces. <laughs> So let's try a little example of uh, just seeing how we could document these people. They're putting uh, compost into these bags so we can reproduce plants. Hopefully I'm not too close here because if I get too close into the camera, it won't work out. I'll be blurry. So let's flip over to them and see what we can capture. If I move, I want to move really smooth. Notice I'm getting down on him so I can see his face. I could zoom into his hands. And I'm always thinking about what's my next shot. So I'm going to back off. I get an establishing shot. And then, if I can do it right, I walk really smoothly. Oh, the puppy's doing something funny, so I get her. <laughs> Hi, puppy darling. Always moving really smooth. And then for her, I'm going to get down here. 
and get her working on these plants. There we go. As soon as I don't have anything more in the shot, I kill the shot. You can experiment with trying to get used to carrying the camera and walking. It's kind of hard to not have the camera jerk in your hand. Hola Chileno, ¿cómo está? Bien. Que bueno. ¿Vas a poner una planta allá? Voy a poner una planta de, planta de plátano medicinal. Perfecto. Ahí está, Ricky. Ok. When you're the cameraman, there's a temptation to say things, to direct the action or comment. That can be kind of a little bit difficult. Uh, you could actually ruin your shots if you do that. If you're being the cameraman, in many cases, it's a lot better if you can be in tune with the subject and turn it on and let them do the talking. Um, there may be cases, and we're learning this, we don't know, uh, where you can narrate as you, as you show someone something. Um, it's a little bit better maybe to do things like be able to show you here's a little bamboo and get it in the shot with you. Uh, as opposed to, oh, here's a bamboo and there's a larger bamboo. That's actually one of the first uh, bamboos I put in there. We'll get used to that. Um, but but I, just, I think we should keep in mind that often uh, the camera person narrating or the camera person directing seems kind of annoying. So we'll keep an eye on it and we'll learn. People take a lot of shots like this from behind the people. It's really better if you run up and you get in front of the person so that you can really see what they're up to. And you can learn how to pan across with the action then. And of course, we're all still learning to do this. So feel free to try different experiments. So even though it's officially bad to move around like this too much and have the background moving, you could try some experiments with that. See what happens. Uh, you could try uh, tipping the camera up towards the sky. You could try you could try shooting downwards from high places. There's a lot of different sets you can try. The point is <coughs> we can have some fun uh, and uh, play around. We'll invent new shots that, uh, that we'll be able to teach each other and use to communicate the strange experiment of the Bosque. Another thing to keep in mind as you create video clips is that whenever it's overcast, it's not overcast right now, you get really great lighting, uh, really soft, beautiful lighting. If you don't have that and you're doing something with people's faces in it, then oftentimes it's best to go ahead and look for a full shadow so that uh, the lighting will still be even. The problem is with harsh lighting like this, you get these shadows on the face, nobody looks that good, so. Okay, I think that's enough of that shit. That's actually pretty good. Well, so I guess to wrap it up, um, you can learn how to record your Bosque experience. And the advantages of that or that you can share the, the things you learn, share your adventures with other people. And also, you'll have memories for the rest of your life about uh, your time here in this strange place. Good luck.